December 28th should be its own holiday where we gather together with our friends and celebrate surviving all the family bullshit of the holidays. Now, in that regard, I, I'm pretty lucky. My family knows what I do for a living and knows that I'm better at arguing about religion and politics than they are, and, you know, we don't talk about it. My parents have religious beliefs. The last thing they want to hear is what I think of them, so that subject just never comes up. And while my extended family has its share of Trumpers, I sure the fuck ain't voluntarily spending any time with them, so the gatherings that I do attend don't tend to have a lot of political arguments either. But even from that enviable position, I don't come home with a tongue free of bite marks. There's always some kind of bullshit dying to be commented on, right? Whether it's cousin so-and-so treating their psoriasis with crystals, or uncle what's-his-name recommending a good chiropractor, or my dad sharing one of the many conspiratorial ways in which they get you, right? And of course, that's part of the course for us, right? The, the, the curse of the skeptical atheist is that in pretty much any social gathering, either we're miserable or everybody else is. I mean, I guess there's a breed of who-gives-a-shit apatheist who can co-mingle with theists all the time, and it's rarely an issue. But if you're like us, right, if you're not just non-religious but anti-religious, it can be physically painful. Because it's not just that you disagree with what's being said, it's that you realize that it's harmful, right? So the sentence your, your clenched teeth are holding back isn't, I disagree with you, it's, you know, that worldview can be directly linked to increases in teen suicide, right? And in nearly every group, they force the issue. It's not just family. You start socializing with a new group of people, and it's all but inevitable that somebody's going to invite you to their church or, or tell you to check out their psychic or their naturopath. And it's very rare that a simple no thank you is sufficient to rebuff this invite. If you say no to church, you have to hear all about how their church isn't like the other churches you've been to before. It has a rock band. Right, and eventually you have to be like, does your church also believe in an omnipotent, omnibenevolent being that decides which kids should and shouldn't have face cancer to get the no to stick? And that leads me to my New Year's resolution this year. For you. I have one, I don't have, I know I'm supposed to make New Year's resolutions for myself, but fuck all that. It never works. Plus, I'm way better at diagnosing other people's problems than my own, and sure, you can ignore it, but that just makes it more resolution-like if you think about it. So one way or the other, you're stuck with it. Here, This is your New Year's resolution. This year, I resolve for you to invite an atheist into your home that's never been there before. All right, so a couple of obvious caveats that I, I need to acknowledge here. Not everyone has a home they can invite people to. Many of you have weird roommate situations, or you have tight quarters, or you live with family that wouldn't be welcoming, or you just don't have a home that you're comfortable inviting other people to. So all of you are exempted. And while I figure you already knew that, I thought it was worth bringing you up, if for no reason but to emphasize to everybody else here how important a resolution it could be. Now, of course, the biggest challenge here is probably going to be meeting an atheist worthy of a home visit. For a lot of you, there could be an atheist meetup or skeptics in the pub group or something like that. But if you live in a town like the one I'm in, it's going to be a lot harder. Hell, you might even have to bus an atheist in from out of town or make your place available to one who's passing through. And I know that might seem awkward, but think about it. Christians do this shit all the time, right? Welcome random Christians they've never met into their home. And from my experience, atheist skeptics have a lot more in common than two random members of the same brand of Christianity, and look, in my experience, most of the time when we try to do shit like this, right, when atheists are like, oh, we need to meet up more or whatever, we overshoot. Instead of aiming for playing board games with a few other skeptics, we start with like a, let's have a monthly meetup with speakers in a service project. And as often as not, what you end up with is one really good meeting and then diminishing returns. And then the whole thing feels like a fucking failure because it's so much less than you set out to do. But if what you set out to do was a single visit... Any echo that comes after that is just a bonus. Look, I know I probably talk about the community angle here too often, but there's a profound sense of self-actualization that happens when you're surrounded by people who you can be yourself around, and nothing brings the value of that camaraderie to the forefront of your mind like spending a few days chewing on your tongue in a desperate effort to be somebody else. 